Let's go to New York now, where we can speak to Yan Jong Jung, Senior Fellow for Global Health at the Council on Foreign Relations. First of all, I wanted to ask you why you think the World Health Organization has been struggling to reach a decision on whether to declare this a global health emergency? Um, yes, uh, from um, uh, my understanding is that uh, there's a uh, equal divide on whether to declare it a public health emergency of international concern. Some experts believe that uh, the conditions uh, for what we call the fake uh, public health emergency have been met. Um, but some disagree. And we also know uh, that uh, not all decisions at WHO may um, have been uh, based on situations and developments in the biological world. Unfortunately, that is uh, often the case. And currently, or well, the um, experts who uh, opposed uh, the um, fake decision uh, based on that uh, still we don't know much about the virus, including the case fatality rate, the transmission rate. Uh, so there's still a lot needs to be known. And, right. Uh, so, so, as you say, the, so the World Health Organization has taken a cautious position because they say that there is a great deal we don't know about how fatal the virus is and how quickly it's being transmitted. Uh, it comes from the same family as SARS, doesn't it? Now, when you look at the characteristics of this new virus, could it be, could it end up being just as bad as SARS? Well, it belongs to the same family of coronavirus, uh, which uh, is uh, what we call the RNA virus. Comparing to uh, so-called DNA virus, it's uh, subject to high mutation and uh, also can potentially more uh, very virulent. So there is indeed a likelihood that it could uh, be um, developing into a SARS-like virus, if not even worse. So just, just so that I understand this correctly, because this uh, particular virus is subject to mutation, even if it's not so fatal now because symptoms go from mild to severe, that could change as the outbreak progresses and mutates. Exactly. There are already reports that uh, we are saying that we are seeing the third and fourth generation of the viruses now. So... Human-to-human -human transmission has obviously been confirmed. We have seen it spread. What do we know about how easily it spreads from one person to another? Well, uh, so far, we don't have the um, large uh, enough number of cases to make a firm um, conclusion on how transmissible the virus is. There's a term we call r not uh, to refer to uh, the, uh, how many secondary cases a person who's infected will cause. So, Kurt, but the, the, I saw a report that suggests, a research that suggests that uh, currently, based on existing data, uh, one person who's infected on average could lead to do two infections. Now, the Chinese government is taking some unprecedented measures. Some five cities are subject to travel restrictions and millions of people under lockdown. Are they doing the right thing to contain this virus? Because, of course, during the SARS outbreak, there was a great deal of concern about information being concealed and not enough being done. Well, I think uh, probably we have to wait uh, maybe a couple more days, uh, actually, <laughs> probably two weeks uh, also. Uh, to tell whether that these measures will be effective. Um, those measures, however, they're very unusual. Uh, I haven't seen that the government implementing such measures like quarantining a city, uh, even during the SARS outbreak. But that practice itself uh, can be traced to several hundred years ago, uh, medieval era, uh, what we call the, the cordon sanitaire, you know, basically, they erected the barriers, you know, the buffer zones uh, to uh, prevent people from crossing those zones. And those who are there uh, fleeing uh, these areas uh, would be, could be executed. Thank you very much. It was interesting to talk to you, Yan Zhongzheng, get your perspective on this senior fellow for global health at the Council on Foreign Relations.